Charlie Ham ready to put toe to leather, and we are underway in Wallace Wade Stadium. Devin Ford on the return for the Irish, and the Blue Devils swarming down short of the 20-yard line. And that is where Sam Hartman will go to work in the top 10 career in both passing yardage and touchdown passes. And this season, he's been spectacular. Really has. And, and what, what is more impressive to me than the numbers is how he has fit into this roster. It's a veteran group, great leader, makes guys around him better. Uh, just a, a kind of a guy's guy. Players will like to hang out with him, even though he's one of the older guys on this roster. Has just fit himself into this team and this offense very well. First snap, and this is what Notre Dame does. They want to run the football, and they do it with Audrey Estime, and Duke's there to stop him for nothing. Yeah, Estime will have a big role tonight. You look at our impact players. Estime has got to bring the physicality, and you mentioned the injuries. Holly talked about that with Coach, and I think Chris Tyree, who's really their best, most dynamic receiver on the outside. Al Blades Jr., transfer over from Miami. Brandon Johnson, number three. This Duke defense, very athletic on the back end. On second and long. Hartman plays it right on his tight end, and he's got the big fella Mitchell Evans who had the huge game against Ohio State. Well, just get him right down the middle, and one of the things that this, this team knows is their ability to use the different receivers to try to flood zones. You saw the free safety there get affected there. It was Jalen Stenson. He takes the bigger tight end, stays, so it opens it up for Evans in a nice play. Pickup of 28, Kirk, and that ball, I believe, traveled 20 yards in the air. First such completion Duke has allowed all year. Two back set. You'll see some of this from the Irish. Hartman, that's more than 20 yards in the air. And he's, oh, he had him for a second. Tobias Merriweather couldn't hang on. I tell you, you got to give Jared Parker, the offensive coordinator, a lot of credit because he anticipates that Duke's going to be on islands playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. So what do you do? You attack them. You trust those receivers to make plays. Ter terrific ever effort there by Merriweather. <laughs> Almost came down with it through the fingertips, and Hartman thought he had one. Very close. I'm talking to Parker this week. And they said, can we get Hartman a few more throws? Can we get him a few more shot plays? And they came out and jumped on him quickly with a couple early, but a flag is flying. False but start. Offense. Number 52, five-yard penalty, second down. That's the center, Zeke Carell, Riley Johnson, our referee tonight. And sometimes, you know, you're just an end of the game. Watch the ball move just slightly. Good job by the umpire recognizing that. First miscue here by this Notre Dame offense. It has come out swinging on the road in this environment. Remember, we wondered how would they be? How would they be after last week? But well, they, they came out with an aggressive mindset. It's a good way to get yourself into the game. Pick up a big pass play and try for another one. But now they're behind the sticks on second down. And nowhere to go for Estime again as Dwayne Carter was the first to hit it. But they are pinching from the outside. Dwayne Carter, really known for his interior play. Watch him get down. You also see the big defensive end on the other side. Williams also worked their way down. They're concerned about Notre Dame, the way they're so athletic. They like to pull their linemen, so they're beating them to the point of attack there on those poles. That false start put him behind the chains, and they lost two more. Now Hartman will dump it to Estime. Estime. Crosses into Duke territory, but he'll be stopped short of the first down. They knock him down at the 47. Brandon Johnson cuts him down. So often you see, you know, you got momentum, you're, you're taking shots downfield, and then just a little thing like the center flinching, moving the ball back, getting behind the sticks, really impacts not just being well, now first and 15, but also affecting the just the overall flow of that drive. The well, Fighting Irish will try to pin them deep. Bryce McPherson back to kick it away, but they'll fake it. Call the fake, and he's got the edge. And headed to the edge is Jeremiah Love. Love inside the red zone, and before he's knocked out of bounds, and Notre Dame is coming out throwing haymakers. Well, they overloaded the right side, and it can't go back to the mindset. 
Marcus Freeman. Duke tried to adjust. You can see this side. Look at that. You have one guy over here. Everybody loaded up to the right. Duke confused by this. They were just outmanned. And now you're giving the ball to one of your fastest playmakers there with an ability with love. Six foot, 197, true freshman. You could see he was happy to get out in space. Heck of a call there by Notre Dame and Marcus Freeman. Now a scoring opportunity for the Irish, courtesy of the guy who they say has live legs, and we saw it there. And in fact, so live, they go right back to him, and Love gets it down to about the six, maybe the five-yard line. You know, that's that's a punt-safe situation. Like, you're, you're not even thinking about the possibility. That is a complete surprise for Mike Elko and his special teams coordinator. And again, a gutsy call against the grain by Marcus Freeman. I mean, they, they worked on that, I'm sure, all week, but you're in punt safe. Almost everybody punts in that situation, but uh, caught him completely off guard. Last week against Ohio State, Notre Dame had some drives that bogged down late. This is the eighth play. They'll go to Estime. Estime, who hadn't found any running room tonight until then, and he goes in for the touchdown. Come on, boy. Audric Estime goes in for his sixth touchdown this season. Chris, or, uh, Chris Reese, watch the offensive <laughs> line play here. This is what Duke's concerned about, the pulling of these linemen, the blocking angles that they pick up, and you give Estime just a little bit of room getting downhill to that second level, and obviously he's a handful at 230 pounds. Eight plays, 82 yards, marched it right down the field, and Spencer Schrader will... All right, attack on the extra point. This splits the uprights and one possession. And the Fighting Irish have answered the question about how they'll come out of the gate. Will they be ready to play? Will they be flat? The answer so far is not. Your NFL Sunday starts early, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. you got to get ESPN Plus to see Bijan Robinson and the Falcons take on Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. 9.30 Eastern time to get ESPN Plus. Go to ESPNPlus.com or download the app. You can do it that way. Audrey Estime loves to watch tape of Bijan Robinson. Chris Fowler, who will be calling that game, will see a good bit of Bijan tomorrow. But he's off to a great start. Yes, he is. Would be worthy of a first round pick. Being selected in the first round. Terry Moore finding a little running room for Duke on the kickoff return and gets across the 25 yard line. And that's where the Blue Devils will put it in play behind their quarterback, Riley Leonard. Well, Riley Leonard is a fun quarterback to watch. You and I doing some shows in a preseason talked about what kind of year he could have. And he's one of the better dual threat guys. Now, tonight, Notre Dame's concerned about his legs. So they're going to have to load up the line of scrimmage, create some one on one opportunities. So his arms and legs a factor. I want you to take note of that left guard or left tackle, I should say, too. Graham Barton out of this game. He might be Duke's best offensive lineman in the first play. They're getting aggressive, too. And it's quarterback to former quarterback Jordan Moore. Unbelievable adjustment back to the ball, as you say, by the former quarterback. Great chemistry with Riley Leonard. He just put that ball up, by the way, against Benjamin Morrison, who's coming off an incredible game against the Ohio State wide receiving duo of Marvin Harrison and Mecca Buka. Leonard hit as he throws, and he was almost able to connect with Nicky Dalmo and his tight end. Howard Cross, the third, was applying the pressure, and he's been sensational this season for Marcus Freeman. Yeah, he's not huge in the interior, but he's very, very quick, and he's a veteran guy. Consistent effort is the thing that really stands out. He'll never take a playoff. You always appreciate that, but to have, have some quickness in the interior helps his pass rush and what they want to do. You can see how quickly they affected Riley Leonard on that last pat play. We'll see Cross chasing down plays and wearing that 56. You have to say, wait, he's a defensive lineman, not a linebacker. They go empty. Jalen Calhoun moves to the slot. Leonard finds it. Riley Leonard run right on the money to Calhoun makes a grab. It's a first down Duke. Great job motioning out the back, creating a lot of space in the middle. Basically have five receivers with that empty set and a lot of space. Good job of navigating that and making the throw. Four receivers to Leonard's left, and maybe a dangerous throw as he tried to get it to Jordan Waters. 
But you, you mentioned Barton being out, who, who is a veteran and an all-conference player. So you're losing your best offensive lineman, and now we've got Brian Parker, who's a redshirt freshman out of Cincinnati St. Xavier. Very, very smart. Just a young guy. Hasn't played in a lot of football. He's been in some mop-up duties, played against UConn late, but not against Notre Dame in prime time, playing that left tackle spot, protecting the blind side of Riley Leonard. Almost jumping into the neutral zone as Leonard tries to draw them off. And he gives it off to Waters, and he was knocked down immediately. I think we're going to see Leonard keep it quite a bit. And it'll also be interesting to see if Notre Dame tries to force him to keep it or force him to give it up on those zone reads. Yeah, and, and this time, watch the right guard pulling from behind. Just gets blown up. The play gets completely blown up in the backfield. Because Notre Dame, the size and quickness and the way they're attacking, anticipating, again, get those poles up front by those big linemen. They're quick. Those linebackers move fast along with the edge players. Duke's been middle of the road and converting on third down. And after those big plays, they need 10 here. Close to an offside call. Leonard throwing toward the end zone and through the hands of Jordan Moore, but I believe this is going to be a free play because it looks as if the Irish jumped in the neutral zone. Yeah, free play. Smart to know. Again, he got pressured. This is going to be a problem for Duke tonight is their offensive line against his pass rush from Notre Dame. Offside, defense number one, five-yard penalty, third down. That's Javante Jean-Baptiste, who was the Ohio State transfer, who was great against Ohio State last, last week. Yeah, he just jumps up at the top. Good job of mixing up the claps there by Riley Leonard. So instead of third and long, now he's at third and five. And I know a lot of us you know, as fans, we watch the ball, but you want to watch that game within the game. It's that offensive line trying to give Leonard, who is athletic, giving him time and getting a lot of different looks. Look at these mug backers right now walked up trying to create confusion on third down and back out. If Leonard diagnoses correctly, he does. He finds his man and Duke has a first down. It's Jalen Calhoun again. Playing some games pre-snap, just kind of moving him around, trying to create a matchup that's fair, favorable. Kevin Johns does a really good job as an offensive coordinator, moving people around and trying to find the matchup that he thinks his guys can win, and especially saving that there for that third and five. Great route in, then back out in an accurate throw. There is the Blue Devil offensive coordinator. So right after the Fighting Irish marched down and scored, Duke trying to answer right on the cusp of the red zone. Leonard firing, and it is out of bounds and incomplete. Looking for Calhoun and Thomas Harper, who's a good cover man, had excellent coverage that time. So Duke has run seven plays. They have one run and six passes. And I think that has as much to do with Notre Dame's plan at loading up and being worried about the run game, being worried about Riley Leonard, leaving their DBs, who they have a lot of confidence in, to be able to live out there on islands. And Duke is trying to create matchups to try to attack that look. They're a little softer here, at least pre-snap. Now they're coming down. Now they're coming. Irish have been very good getting pressure, and there is nowhere to run as Jack West Moore is hit by House Cross. Well, there's the quickness, the movement right here. Watch him just kind of get skinny here and just slide through that gap, and that next day he's in the backfield making a play on Moore. So it's not always about the blitz. Al Golden has a veteran defense that knows how to show one look, go to another. They're going to disguise a lot tonight, especially with the youth up front, try to create as much confusion and hesitation as they can. Golden's defense gets pressure on dropbacks about 50% of the time. Top six in the country. If they can get some heat on Leonard here. Leonard trying to get away. Riley breaks a tackle, but he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. And he's knocked down right at the 20s, and Notre Dame defense is stiffened. They, they showed man-to-man. -man. It looks like, okay, we got one-on-one -on -one out here. That's pre-snap. Now watch post-snap. Now he's going to go out here and try to take any threat away. I think they confused Riley Leonard. I think he's anticipating more than likely he had one-on-one -on -one matchups. So, again, pre-snap to post-snap, different looks, create the doubt, and let the pass rush get home. Todd Polino has been perfect from this range. It'll be a 37-yarder. 
for the sophomore from Cornelius, North Carolina. Did not hit it well at all, and Notre Dame's defense forces Duke to come up empty on that drive. After the big plays, really strong stand by the Fighting Irish and a miss hit on the field goal and it's still 7-0 Notre Dame. Championship game, you saw Steve Spurrier. He won an ACC title here in 1989. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear is more driven. And it appears thus far that Notre Dame is quite ready for the road. March down the score with their initial possession. Duke missed a field goal. Now Audrick Estime has it on first down. They pick up about three. Well, what an impressive way to start this game with Notre Dame on the road. They open it up right here with 12 personnel. One back, two tight ends. Occupy the free safety. Creates the seam. Perfect, accurate throw by Sam Harpin. Then the fake where they overload the right side. Duke unable to adjust it. Not really anticipating it. Big yards. And then Estime finishes it off with a physical run to put the Irish up seven here early. Love had a couple of plays to fake punt and also another play on the drive. But we've seen a lot of Estime this Ohio State last week. They rolled a lot of backs through. Audrick only had 14 carries. Ball start. Offense. Yep. Number 52. Reese. Five-yard penalty. I don't know what's going Second on with, with Farrell, but he did it again. Um, you know, he, I don't know if it's the hard clap or what's getting him, but you'll, you'll see him flinch again. Right there, just a it's little move there right in front of Dwayne Carter, and then they get behind the sticks. They're right in front of the student section, but obviously the Irish are used to playing in loud in environments everywhere they go. Maybe they're putting that Cameron crazy Wade Whack of Hex on <laughs> Second and 13, Hartman got drilled as he let it go. Dwayne Carter, the three-time captain, was right in his mustache and his beard in this game. Yeah, Carell doesn't have enough to deal with. Now he's got the big man right here who knows how to handle business, has power, has speed, has experience, and right, just went right over top of the center. Maybe he's worried about the snaps and just unable to deal with the quickness and the power, as I mentioned, of Dwayne Carter. Well, he was a... Delightful guy to talk to yesterday. Enjoyed spending time with him. See if Duke can get off the field. Hartman gets drilled again, but delivered the football right on target. And Mitchell Evans has another catch, and they move the sticks. Boy, they bring everybody. It's much like you'd, what you'd expect from Mike Elko. The pressure ends up eventually coming around and, and getting home. Notre Dame's offensive line just enough. Estimate does a good job of picking up a blitz. One extra man comes. See the picked up there, but a clean shot by Dillon just after he releases the ball. How about the focus downfield by Hartman? Back to the ground with Estime. Good pickup on first down of about seven. Think about being Duke. You got all this noise. You got all the excitement. Everybody's here. Everybody wants to see what's going on with Duke. They beat Clemson earlier this year. They get exactly what they want. First drive. They get a chance to get Notre Dame off the field. They have the fake punt that hurts them and kills some of the momentum. Then they get them deep behind their own, deep in their own territory behind the sticks. They convert another third down. And it's like all the opportunities for momentum and, and a chance to believe being taken away from them by Notre Dame. Two of those other backs in a two-back set now as the Irish keep it on the ground. And they give it to Jabron Payne, and he's stacked up for nothing third down coming. I, I like that look. I like that changeup. They haven't shown it a lot, but I, I think it creates some matchup opportunities. It's a good job up front by Duke, but you can see those two backs having Price and Payne. You'll see that continue to be sprinkled in. And I, I think by Parker going to that, the offensive coordinator, they're eventually trying to set up other opportunities whether it's a play action pass or even option game where you can fake one back and pitch it to get him on the corner to the other another third down chance for the duke defense he picked up a 14 on third and 13 a moment ago hartman firing there he is again big tight end evans his third catch of the night and he's all the way down to the duke 41 
You take a chance with Jeremiah Lewis by creating this cushion right here. And even though he's a big tight end, Evans has the ability to run great routes. How about the throw again by Hartman, low and away from the defender. Lewis as a safety, rolls the dice, takes a chance by going for the football to try to make a big play on third down, and it cost him big yards there for the Irish big tight end. They've got a couple of guys who can catch the ball from that tight end spot. Evans did a lot of damage against the Buckeyes last week out of the slot. Now lined up in the wing. Hartman not on the same page there with his freshman Rico Flores. We check in with Holly. Well, guys, you're seeing a steady dose at the tight end right now, Mitchell Evans for Notre Dame. That's because they're down some key receivers. You talked about Jaden Thomas being out of this game, but they're also without Jaden Greathouse. He was a late scratch after tweaking his leg Thursday in practice. He's got 12 receptions. The freshman is one of their most dynamic playmakers. He will not play tonight. So only three guys really in the rotation for Notre Dame, but so far the tight end looks great. Yeah, Holly, it's a great point, though. Also look to Rico Flores when they need to get a few more receivers in there. Another true freshman. Hasn't played a lot. Caught a touchdown pass against Ohio State last week. Here's Chris Tyree, the former running back, who is an explosive receiver. It'll be about three or four yards short of the first down. It's so impressive to watch Notre Dame's offensive line. How quick you've got a flag down, but how quickly they can get downfield. There is no flag. There's no foul. Second down. I think they were concerned about a legal man downfield, but I think he caught that ball just behind the line of scrimmage, so that's why they picked the flag up. Is that when we say good piece of officiating? Why does officiating always come in pieces? <laughs> it is third down and four here. Back to Estime, and Estime, they are ready for Audrey tonight. It'll be fourth down and four. Jamie on Franklin, the Notre Dame transfer there to make the stop. Good job of getting off of blocks. Franklin's got to be fired up tonight, right? And all these guys from Notre Dame he's friends with and, and buddies with. Boy, this, this is going to be fun to watch. This kicker is impressive, Spencer Schrader. He's got a big leg, make it from 61, 62 in practice. Of course, Marcus Freeman wants him to hit those mid-range field goals too, but this one's from 53. And there's a flag down, and it might have to be from 58 now. False start. Offense number 74, five-yard penalty. Billy Schruth out of so both of those left the left side both uh, linemen moving now it looks like they're going to bring the, the punter out playing field position as far as we know <laughs> last time they sent the punter out in plus territory they faked it Jalen Calhoun is standing at his own eight yard line now backing up to the seven for Duke is Rice McPherson will indeed punt it away that back spun in over in and Calhoun makes the catch at the 12 and Duke keeps Notre Dame off the board this time 2 12 to go in the first Blue Devils are 13 and 4 they're number 17 in the rankings highest they've been since 1994 which was the last time they won a game matching ranked opponents when they beat Virginia it's something they have an opportunity to do here at home tonight against the Fighting Irish. Riley Leonard going back to work and Peyton Jones who typically wears number 10 wearing number 21 tonight gets the ball Harper on the stop. And yeah, Mike Elko is uh, you know, I'm sure he a little frustrated with the way this game has started. We get caught up in the offense and the defense, but the third phase special teams gave up the fake punt, missed a field goal. If you're going to knock off Notre Dame, you can't give up plays like that. He's got to get his guys locked in. Leonard had time and he threw an interception. Hit his man right in there, Xavier Watts, who we did a big story on on game day last week, and the former receiver shows he's still got hands. Let's go to the AT&T 5G clicker, Herb. Uh, Watts showing a lot of savvy, just kind of playing center field and reading the quarterback's eyes. 
does a really good job. He's just kind of sitting there, reading the route, trying to become a, you know, a defender that can become a factor in hitting a crossing route. But next thing you know, he reads the eyes, the pressure gets there, and the ball is thrown right into his chest. And I, I think Riley Leonard's expecting him to sit back, dropping in coverage, but he's just kind of sitting in that robber, reading the eyes, steps in front of that crossing route, and he throws it late over the middle, which is always a no-no against a good defense. First interception of the season and in his last six games dating to last season. Now the Irish are set up at the Duke 13. Hartman buys time, dumps it underneath, and Flores had it for a minute, but it popped away from him. We've talked so much about Riley Leonard's athletic ability. Sometimes you you really don't appreciate or expect to see that from from Sam Hartman you know when he was at Wake Forest and they ran that that slow RPO offense that Dave Clawson has made you know legendary really a lot of people studied it and you know I think Sam Hartman had as much feel for that as anybody that's ever run it it's a very different offense here and he doesn't do it a ton but you could see from that last play he can get away from trouble Two back set, they'll go back to Love. Jeremiah Love's had an impact in this first quarter as he gets it to the 10. Third down coming, they'll need about seven. What a, what a great battle in the middle of this, uh, the, the trenches. You know, the, the strength of Notre Dame's offense is their offensive line on the edges with, with Alt and Fisher, but the middle is where you're gonna see a great battle because you, you have Dukes, that's their strength with Franklin and Carter. And they're holding up very well. Final minute of the first quarter. Irish trying to take advantage of that turnover. Flags flying. False start. Offense number 17. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, at least it wasn't the center this time. <laughs> I was hoping it wasn't, but it is the, the young receiver, Flores, who is expected to play a little bit more. I think he was just trying to get the call right, a little bit confused, never quite got set up. That is their fourth false start tonight on the road. And their fifth penalty in the first quarter, and now Duke has an opportunity to mitigate, minimize the damage. Hartman. Had time, starting to run out of it, and now he's completely out of it. Jamie on Franklin gets the sack. Spencer Schrader on to try a 35-yard field goal. After the Blue Devil turnover, defense has mitigated the damage. Raider, the grad transfer from USF, but the uprights and Notre Dame turns the turnover into a field goal and they're up 10 nothing as we check in with Kevin Nagandi. Reese, good evening. Time now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update. Eight play 85 yard drive here, book for LSU. Yeah, the offense has been unstoppable. Jaden Daniels has making has made Heisman like plays all night long, Kevin, and at the very end, able to punch it in with the brotherly push. Yeah, the brotherly shove, they okay, say. I'll right? call it what I want to Four total touchdowns for Jaden Daniels. LSU up 35-34 on the road at Ole Miss. Back to you. Kirk, you saw an LSU shootout last week, too, and the Bayou Bengals in another one in Oxford. Yeah, I, I, you know, they're never out of a game because of Jaden Daniels, but, you know, I'm sure Brian Kelly would love to see his defense tighten things up. They're, they're a bit vulnerable on the back end with some transfer portal guys still settling in, so they have to outscore people until that defense can play better. Boy, that has to be a bit of a lift, what the Duke defense just did right there after the turnover. Yeah, I mean, that interception and the way this game is gone, they're, they're starting, that drive started at the 13-yard line. I mean, it felt like Estime or Hartman's going to make a play and put a touchdown on the board, but Duke's defense holds up. This will be Terry Moore returning for the Blue Devils in Notre Dame. 
has it covered very well. He crawled, squirmed his way up to the 22. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, uh, you know, Duke came in with a lot of momentum at home, but here's a fake punt by Notre Dame on their first drive in plus territory. Roll the dice, it pays off. They end up scoring a touchdown. Duke's first possession, a good drive, a missed field goal. And then the last time out, he pressured, throws late over the middle, and a big interception by Xavier Watts. We thought may set up a touchdown, but as we just talked about, Duke tightening things up on their side and, and creating that field goal attempt. Lucky to only be down 10, honestly. Blue Devils haven't been able to get anything going on the ground yet. Haven't seen a lot of designed quarterback runs, which we thought we would. And on the subject of miscues, they have another one as Jordan Moore as it bounces off his chest. That, that ball hit him right where, and again, in his defense, he's still you know, learning how to be a great receiver. I mean, and, and good tight coverage. One thing about these Notre Dame corners, you know, even if you complete that, that's a gain of three or four. I, I think they earned a lot of respect with how they played. I mentioned earlier against Marvin Harrison Jr. and, and Amika Buka, They're just the way they, they held up on islands. And if the Ohio State did complete a pass, it was tight coverage. These two corners are legit. You saw Cam Hart there, Morrison. One of the best in the country. Pick up a few. J.D. Bertrand there to make the stop. Kevin Johns is a play caller for Duke right now. Is is trying to figure out how to how to avoid becoming one-dimensional. They they cannot get anything at all going on the ground. Just five yards rushing. And if they're going to hang in this game, they they are a team that likes to run the ball to set up their pass. They want to be balanced, but the line of scrimmage is not working out in their favor. Missing a starter at left tackle. Pocket collapsing on Leonard, and Leonard goes down. That pressure from the Irish defense gets home. Javante Jean-Baptiste. Jean-Baptiste, and he's, and he's actually on the inside. Normally, he's off the edge with his length. They move him in here. He works and then ends up coming around with that length and with that closing speed. Again, good job with the coverage downfield. Riley Leonard's eyes, one of the things he would do last year when he'd get pressured, he looks down to try to scramble. He did that there. Hey, Notre Dame has the offensive line of Duke and a quarterback right now confused and very rattled. Chris Tyree will return the punt from Porter Wilson. Tyree driven back to his own 34. Tyree's got great speed. He's looking for the corner, and Duke does a good job. Getting him on the ground before he could hit that sideline. But this is all season long student sections across the country competing to be the Taco Bell Live My Student Section of the Year. And download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Call them the Wade Wackos, sort of like the Cameron Crazies. When they stormed this field after they beat Clemson on Labor Day night. Little electricity around this program, and now they're going to try to plug it in and bring some energy against Notre Dame. The Irish have a 10 nothing lead and have the ball back in their own 41. Sam Hartman stands in there in traffic. Cool as a cucumber, and Sam will slide out and pick up a couple. Pretty impressive, right? Sit in that pocket. Everything is closing in around you and, and, and just trust his offensive lineman to take care of him. We keep talking about how he can get away from trouble. Look at the coverage downfield. There he had, you know, they're sitting in zone, mixing up man to zone, trust the line, and at the last second he's able to at least get out of there and pick up a couple yards. You know, Kirk, all those years in that Wake Forest slow mesh offense, the Notre Dame staff talked about how by nature in that offense, you're going to have traffic around you. Sam's pretty comfortable with that as the Irish pop a play up the middle with Jabron Payne, and he'll get into deep territory and pick up the first down. There's that two-back look. You saw Price lead the way in front of him. Nice job by the center, Carell, getting up to the linebacker, Dillon. See the other back there, Price. Again, you get, it's, it's just enough to make Elko and his staff have to adjust to that look. And depending on how they adjust, can open up some wheel routes, rail routes, different things where these backs can get involved in matchups. Now they've got Love and Devin Ford. Two back look. Tight end Evans going, and it is Love. Love 
He, he feels like he's got a little juice to him, Holly, for sure. That's right. You guys are talking about Sam Hartman getting comfortable with this new system. One of the things he had to learn to do, even though he's in the shotgun right now at times, he had to learn how to get under center. He didn't know the tracks, the footwork. He and his center, Zeke Carell, have had to do hundreds of hours by themselves learning how to do that. So he's in the shotgun right now, surveying the field, a little more comfortable from this look. On second down, Hartman short completion. Down to the 45-yard line, it's estimate. Audric showing his ability out of the backfield. A lot of short passes for Notre Dame this season. In the first drive of the night, we saw them take some shots downfield. One of the things they would like to add to the repertoire as the season goes on. As Hartman certainly had a lot of big plays at Wake Forest. Third and six. Move the pocket, fire down and in, complete. Trying to get the ball to hold and stays. His other tight end stays, who has four touchdown catches this year. And trying to get the ball to the big tight ends. Big advantage with their size. Jalen Stenson's 5'8", trying to stay with stays. It's 6'5", so he finds the right matchup. Just not an accurate throw. That time by Sam Hartman. Well, the Duke defense keeps giving their offense a chance. No doubt. They forced the punt here. McPherson sends that tumbling punt back there, and Calhoun does a nice job to snag it, and the Blue Devils will put it in play. Right now, not quite in our top 10. Capital One college football rankings. Notre Dame just on the outside of that, too. With Georgia's struggle at Auburn today, you already have Washington number. Yeah, I have Washington one. I, I, I was really impressed with what Georgia faced. I think that's their best win all year, even though it was a close game, just because of what, how they were battling on the road. Riley Leonard kept it. Duke's averaging over 200 yards rushing Kirk, and that might get them close to zero and negative seven to start this drive. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've got to be able to get some better field position. Notre Dame tonight, even though they haven't put a lot of points on the board, they've been averaging right around midfield at their own 42 and you can see Duke their own 18 yard line and you can't get the running game going it puts even more pressure on this line after Leonard ran for five he throws it to five and Jalen Calhoun is across the 35 to the 36 and maybe the 37 Blue Devils get a first down you kind of stacked off to your right you, you'll see eventually Calhoun come into your picture you see two Duke receivers and two defenders but the softer coverage by Watts makes it a lot easier to na navigate on one option route and work back outside. Leonard back to work looking for Calhoun and misfires. He had a great throwing lane there. He just missed him. Still feel like he's he's just settling into this game. He's probably more frustrated than anybody. There's the offensive line doing a good job of giving him time. You can see that open up, and he just missed it. Leonard, typically very accurate, especially in the short game. Not a guy who's going to unleash 160, 70 yards down the field. He's improved his mechanics, improved his arm strength, continues to grow and improve. Now went it out quickly and he had a little running room from Malik Bowen Sims and he tripped and fell. Well, sometimes when you blitz like this and, and you don't get home, you're still able to impact the, the timing and the rhythm. Watch how he feels hurried because he sees this blitz flash. See how quickly he had to abort, get out of that handoff. He wanted to get it outside where he had some one-on-one -on -one opportunities, but if you don't get it out in front of the receiver, you know, you, you miss a, a golden opportunity for yards after the catch. Duke just one for three on third down tonight, and they need 13. Leonard dumps it underneath. 
Now there's Jacquez Moore, and Moore can't find any running room. J.D. Bertrand there to knock him down. Mickey on there to help as well. I think the biggest difference in his second year with, with Marcus Freeman and without Golden's doing on defense is obviously when you're in that second year, you understand it, but the speed of the back seven, of the backers, the safeties, and especially the corners, it's just a completely different feel to Notre Dame defense compared to what we're used to seeing in, in recent years. Porter Wilson will punt it away to the dangerous Chris Tyree. And short kick a bit up the side of his foot. And it goes out of bounds. And Notre Dame, once again, to your point, Kirk will be set up with Terrell. Duke has some national championship trophies in there for basketball. And next Saturday at noon, the Red River rivalry, Oklahoma and Texas. Texas pulled away from Kansas. Oklahoma trying to do the same to Iowa State right now. It'll be on at noon. Got a sneaking suspicion that we'll be there in game day two. Sam Hartman throws. Oh, what a catch by Evans! Evans gets it inside the 30 to the 25. He made one of these against the Buckeyes last week, too. Again, it's a tough matchup for these safeties. Brandon Johnson, who is a good player, you can just see him to the outside there. Tight ends flexed out, so there's a lot of space. Hartman comes back from his left, back to the right. What an effort to get the left hand up and bring that in. Estimate picks up a couple, but you know what, Kirk? They talked about him watching Michael Mayer, and boy, oh. is he putting on a show. And he looks like Michael Mayer with this catch. That ball looks like it's no chance he can make that catch. The big Paul goes up, almost smacked it towards himself, and then how about the yards after the catch? So, again, Stenson's 5'8", Johnson's listed at 5'10". Really tough matchup against both Evans and Stays when they flex him out like that. He is close to a 100-yard first half after getting 75 last week. He's becoming a weapon. Jordy is. Pick up the pressure. Hartman, that was... Oh, most disastrous as it bounced off of Tobias Merriweather. Freeman applying the heat. Yeah, they brought they brought the ba the backer here. He could have potentially impacted this. You see the back try to pick him up, and Price could f see that physicality. Linebacker, see him getting there. Still throws it accurately enough, and these receivers with Thomas down and Greathouse down, Merriweather and Tyree got to make those tough catches. That's why you're seeing the tight ends. Making a lot of plays tonight. See if the Blue Devil defense can stand firm again. Hartman by time. Hartman finds Flores. He catches it, but he's short of the first down. And they do it again. The Duke defense is, is being asked to make a lot of plays tonight. Good coverage. Good job of mixing up the looks by Mike Elko. And it's, it's really been the creativity, Hartman of all people. You're not getting come into this game expecting him to have to keep plays alive with his legs, but he did that again. Watch it. This ball's going over. The middle. It's going over the All-State. I was going to say, he may kick this out of the stage. It's a moonshot. Spencer Schrader, 37 yards. It's not accurate, but it's over. Look at that. Over the net. And that is exactly what Freeman was talking about. Big leg said I need him to make those and Duke dodges another one and they get the ball back down 10 nothing yeah it's a 37 yarder obviously we're kind of kidding about it this, I mean his leg strength when I was down on the field could not believe how far he kicks the ball and he, he's, you know, just a consistency that's the big issue with him and somehow some way is if you've been watching this whole game it's Notre Dame 10 Duke nothing feels like 24 nothing it's 10 nothing Notre Dame's defense has had their way up front against Duke. If you're just tuning in, one thing to remember is Graham Barton, a veteran left tackle, 35th career start would have been tonight. He's an all-conference left tackle. He's not playing. So Brian Parker, the young redshirt freshman, is inserted at that left side. Part of the reason the Blue Devils have less than 70 yards of offense. Leonard buying time, floating it toward Calhoun, but it's incomplete. So what they're doing is they're, they're chipping, in this case, um, watch uh, the guard here, McIntyre, 
He's going to try to help out. You got inside movement. Now he kind of slides to the outside. You'll see backs helping 53 out, tight ends. He's more than capable. He's just a young guy playing in a big moment against a very talented, experienced defensive line. So hard at this level to come in and play offensive line. Things it's moving beat. really fast. Now Leonard, and that looks bizarre. That looks a lot like the Clemson escape, but he does not get loose. Maris Leofow there to haul him down. And you see that. It's a, it's a run pass option where the back wasn't there. Waters doesn't get there. Watch, you, you see Riley Leonard waiting for him. Look at him, like, I need you to be in here. So it was affected by the rhythm. Usually the back's right there. So if it's a read to hand it off, you hand it off. That time he wasn't close enough to hand it off. So he was in no man's land. He's lucky to just get out of there. It's been a frustrating first half for Mike Elko and the Blue Devils. Another third down here. Flag flies, Leonard under heat. Leonard swarmed under by the Irish defense. Yeah, they're dialing up the heat, getting after him. Uh, defense, number 12, five yard penalty, for down. I was gonna say, I think Patello may, may have lined up offsides. I don't think he jumped. He was down at the, the offense is right down at the bottom of our screen. I don't know if his, you just see him right here trying to get in that sprinter stance, but leaning across the line yeah. of scrimmage. So Duke catches a break. It helped him. You can see him turn the corner. We talked about the Duke miscues. Notre Dame now has six penalties and almost all of them false starts lining up off sides 30 yards. So Duke another chance on third down. Leonard buying time and Riley Leonard looks a little bit out of sorts in the pocket. Another third down goes awry. Duke is now one for five in trying to move the sticks on third down. You see him kind of almost smirking like, man, they, they're, they're getting me, especially on third downs. The, the different looks, they're one of five on third down. And I think he's seen a different third down look every single time. Well, Porter Wilson, who had a poor punt last time, he did unleash a 70-yarder earlier this year against Clemson. And Notre Dame put a little heat on that one. Much better than the last effort. Tyree makes the fair catch just inside his own 25-yard line. And just over five minutes to go in the half, and Sam Hartman will go back to work after the 51-yard punt. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? The unmistakable voice of James Taylor singing the unofficial anthem of the state of North Carolina. You know, he grew up just, just outside of Chapel Hill. His dad taught medicine at North Carolina, which is most are aware, just about eight to ten miles, depending on the path that you take from where we are here on campus at Duke inside five minutes to play here in the first half and the one thing the Duke defense has kept him in the game and Audrey Guestime has found tough sledding for the most part tonight. Yeah he has but it, right now 30 plays in it's a good job of being balanced and there are 15 runs 15 passes. Flag flies Hartman buys time and Sam's going to throw it away. And they're going to get a holding call on Spindler, the right guard. He lost his balance and he was falling. He pulled a Duke defender down with him. Holding, offense number 50. 10 yard penalty, second out. It's the seventh penalty against the Fighting Irish tonight. Yeah, good, good job of pressure right in the middle of your screen 50 see how he loses his balance just pulls on he just he's like I, I'm, if I'm going down you're coming down with me <laughs> he, look either way it was going to be wrecked if he didn't do that he was going to hit Hartman Some, right it was not once the big fella started to go back <laughs> it was nothing was going to nothing was going to be good Time protection holds up, and now Hartman misfires. He had Rico Flores and threw it over his head. 
again, I, I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again, but a big part of this turnaround with Duke is is how athletic they are this year in the back end. They brought in a couple transfer portals. Miles Jones actually not playing tonight. He's from Texas A&M. We've seen Jeremiah Lewis from Northwestern, Al Blades Jr. from Miami. You know, they don't have a ton of, of, of portal players, but they were wise to upgrade on the back end. And you mix that with Brandon Johnson and Jalen Stenson, and you got a pretty good group. And tried to run it on third and 19. That's me he's knocked down, and the Irish will punt. We get another flag down. It looks like the reason that's important. Oh, looks no, no, looks like it just fell out of his pocket. Nice job by the Duke player there, being a good citizen, handing it back <laughs> to the umpire. The reason that's a big deal is like you, you got a Notre Dame team that's down at receivers and trying to find things offensively. No flag thrown on the field. Fourth down. Sir, yes, sir. But the, the <laughs> tight ends are involved in the pass game, right? So. It's a little bit of a conservative approach, but they have the 10-0 lead, and I think Marcus is very confident the way his defense is playing. Bryce McPherson puts a foot to it. Smear Hagens has a good punt driven back to his 23. Hagens hits it back up to the 30. Had to do a little bit of work to get there, and the Blue Devils will try to get something going on offense. This week, Monday Night Football. Seahawks against former Duke quarterback Daniel Jones and the Giants, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 Pacific. ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. Yeah, hopefully Saquon Barkley looks like he's going to be a game-time decision. I had the Giants uh, last week when they played the 49ers. Couldn't get a whole lot going, and you know they're going to have a bad taste in their mouth to go up against Seattle. It's the best field position of the night at their own 30 to start a drive here for Duke. You know, there's some similarities with Daniel Jones and Riley Leonard. Jones was a terrific basketball player in high school. Many thought Riley Leonard would end up playing college basketball instead because of athleticism like you see there. Hey, you'll take that. That's positive yards, zone read, an easy thing that he's comfortable with. Notre Dame collapsed down on the back more and gave him just enough room to try to get some positive yards. It's, it's a three or four yard gain, but it's better than being the second and 10 or, or second and 12. It's been that kind of night for this offense. They need to stay on schedule. They want to be at second and five and third and two. That's where they are with this offensive line tonight against the talented front from Notre Dame. Leonard designed quarterback run and Riley gets it across the 40 to the 41. It'll be a first down. Yeah, that, that time, Kevin Johns went to almost that quad look with the, all the receivers here. What that does is look at all the Notre Dame defenders over there. So now you've got numbers the right way at the line of scrimmage, and now you get him involved in the running game. If you're not being able to run the ball at the backs, utilize the athletic ability of Riley Leonard and get the numbers right by using those formations and spread Notre Dame's defense out. He's Notre Dame, or rather, Duke's leading rusher tonight with five yards rushing. And not much there for Jacquez Moore as we check in with Holly. Well, Riley Leonard and Daniel Jones actually do have a great relationship. You see the similarities. Well, they kind of grew up doing the same thing with that basketball. They had the same trainer growing up. They speak on the phone, text on the phone. And Riley told me this summer that Daniel has been a great resource for him. He saw him do it, how the, he had great success here at Duke. And he's trying to follow that mold. And he leans on Daniel for that great advice. And they do frequently communicate. Yeah, Holly, they work with David Morris down in Mobile, one of the better quarterbacks coaches in the entire country does a great job with quarterback country and they, he works with both of them it's a growing stable down in mobile too yeah There's a lot of guys are flocking there to hone their skills with david yeah cut cliff guy that's my right. coach david quarterback at ole miss and now you get to third down Again, a one of five, it comes down to, does, does Notre Dame come after this offensive line? They've been mixing up their looks, showing pressure, dropping, showing pressure, and coming after them, disguising pressure. Just over a minute to go. Duke can pick up this first down. They might really pick up the pace. They can and they do. Samir Hagens has the catch. Clock will stop inside two minutes and a half for the first down. You, you get some drops by this Notre Dame defense. So now you've got some openings underneath. Good job of climbing in the pocket that time by Riley Leonard to be able to locate his receiver. 
Quarterback draw. Leonard is loose. Can he make a man miss? No, he'll step out of bounds at the 22, and Duke is threatening. When you blitz and you play man, you've got to be accountable for an athletic quarterback, and there's nobody left in the middle. What you love is Riley Leonard did not hesitate. He saw man-to-man -man because of that blitz, didn't wait around to try to find an open receiver, just took off and got great yards there by recognizing that blitz. Uh, Kevin Johns told us this week they would incorporate quarterback run into the throw game if he saw it. They wanted him to be able to do that and see how well he's run the ball this year. Uh, it's 56 seconds to go. You got three timeouts. It's 10 nothing. You, if you get a touchdown here and you're a Duke fan, wow, that would be huge. After this half, <laughs> you bet. Leonard, right on the money, all the way down to the 10. It'll be another first down for the Blue Devils as Jordan Moore makes the catch. They move Waters out of the backfield. The linebacker ran with him. Good job of getting the pre-snap look there by Riley Leonard. He knew he had his favorite target matched up in the inside against the safety and really good route in separation to make that an easy throw. He's got a good relationship with Moore, the former quarterback. They work hard together. And that's a favorable matchup against that Thomas Harper, the backup safety. All right, so Duke trying to get something on the board in the final minute as we check in with Kevin. Reese, boost, infinite halftime report moments away. Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagani here. Number one Georgia test of today. But Brock Powers pulled them through. Yeah, we're seeing defense in Durham. Not seeing that in Oxford, Boog. Defense is awesome. Whoever has the ball last between LSU and Ole Miss, they'll probably win. Cannot wait to show you the highlights there. And why Booger has a different number one than the voters. We'll show you that list coming up. Back to you, R.D. I can't imagine that Booger is a little nauseated by what's going on defensively in Oxford. Booger, come on, man. What's going on with that LSU defense? <laughs> we saw it firsthand last, last week against Arkansas. The offense, they're, that's a playoff caliber offense with Jaden Daniels. But, man, they pride themselves with great players like Booger McFarland of being one of the best defenses in the country. Just a lot of new faces on the back end that teams have been able to exploit. Saw Duke's top receiver, Jalen Calhoun, walking off the field, and he's not in the lineup on this first and ten play. Final minute to go from the 11. Riley Leonard, he's hit his through, and it'll be second down and ten. There's Heather Leonard, that's Riley's mom. Probably see that bracelet there that says, you suck. <laughs> I, I will explain that because Riley got tired of all the praise, so he told his mom, you need to keep me level-headed, so she sends him text that say... And it made a risk. And brisk, briskly, and she brought us some yeah. on game day. Yeah, I wore it the whole show. The thing was, she didn't mean it with Riley. She might have with us. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Here's Leonard. Riley Leonard shakes a tackle and... It's down close to the five, maybe the mark him at the seven, third down coming. Yeah, another quarterback design run, smart there to get the numbers right. Got behind Pickett, who's in right now at right guard. So the tight end. Not the huge hurry with those two timeouts. Now the crowd's getting a little bit restless yeah. that. They can pick up a first down. And he calls the timeout. Make sure they get this third and five play right. So here is Riley and Heather Leonard. We grew up in Fair Oak, Alabama. And see, there's the text that mom <laughs> <laughs> sends him all the time. He just... He was tired of everybody praising him. He's sort of the toast of fair hope. Everybody in town loves him. Yeah, but he, he's the quintessential good guy. Doesn't drink, doesn't cuss, polite, good looking, whole thing. Yeah, well, he, he's the total package and he's the leader of this offense. And, and what you really respect is things haven't gone his way and he's battling. You love to see that from quarterbacks. Things aren't always gonna go well. You know, it's how you respond to that. Doing the Detroit game this past week, Jerry Goff talked about how he's really matured in his seventh year as a starter. He said, you know, I, I, I've realized that everything's not going to be perfect. I have to battle through some adversity. It, it, everybody's going to face it. It's what you do when you're in the storm. Right now, she's watching her son <laughs> battle through that here in this first half. What would you run here, Kirk? Well, I, the way he's been involved in the run game, you're going to have to try to count on your receivers getting a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Who can beat 
these DBs and get separation. Hagan's in motion. Now in third down. Oh, Riley let the goal of the football. Let's see who comes up with it. I think Duke may have gotten it back. And they are very fortunate they didn't have their second turnover of the first half. Samir Hagan's was there to get hold of it. Yeah, he's trying to, to make a play. And it looked like, yeah, as you say, Hagan's ended up getting on top of it. Life is a parent of a quarterback right there. <laughs> Tough. Oh, man. I don't know that there's anything more glorious or more agonizing than watching your kids play, you know? I mean, and yeah, they're disappointed by that, but disaster averted. And now with four seconds remaining, Duke can get on the board. That's not how they wanted the drive to end, but if they could put some points on the board, we're very fortunate to be down only seven if this field goal's good. Yeah, yeah, obviously they were thinking about a touchdown. Really, Riley Leonard on that drive with his legs, a lot of design. It wasn't just creating, it was a lot of design runs, and they were able to move the ball. Best drive by far the night. Now they did have a field goal attempt earlier that was makeable and they missed. See if they can put this through and pull within one possession. They'd be very happy considering the way this first half has gone to be only down by seven. When Todd Polino has missed from 38, this one will be from 25. And Polino missed it again. And anything that could possibly go wrong for Mike. So the Blue Devils will get it first. Terry Moore is the deep man. He will let it sail into the end zone. And Duke will have it on the 25. Tonight's Mark of a Fighter moment brought to you by Modelo. This is what we were talking about. The adjustment that Duke made was getting the numbers right. See how they're spreading Notre Dame's defense all over the field with, with wide receivers going empty. Here you got jet motion, getting the quarterback counter, getting the numbers right, allowed them to level that playing field at the line of scrimmage. Again, their best offensive lineman, who's the most veteran of the bunch, Barton, Graham Barton is out, so we've seen a redshirt freshman who stepped in and Brian Parker and actually held his own there in that first half. He was not giving up a lot of activity off that left side. Protecting Leonard's blind side. Leonard will throw and is deflected immediately and almost intercepted by Xavier Watts. He had one in the first half, almost had his second. Yeah, that ball looked like it was tipped. It's an RPO that he makes the right read, but John, you got Bapti it. <laughs> John Baptiste with that length, we saw him when he was at Ohio State. He's really more of a pass rush specialist. He would come in on third downs and use his length with his, his, uh, his arms to knock balls away. Tonight, he's been more of an enforcer against the run. That time reminding what he, what he can do as a pass rusher. He had a career high eight tackles against the Buckeyes last week and he's been all over the place tonight. Leonard trying to find some room and Leah Fowl chases him out of bounds as we check in with Holly. Mike Elko said this game has gone much like he expected. He said we're good on defense. I expected a low scoring game but he said we have to get going on offense. Our run game has to be a better. We have to establish that right now and I asked him about his kickers troubles. Would he go for it more? He said no. We have to be able to make a 27 yard field goal period. So they will continue to kick. One other note, number five, Jalen Calhoun, who has been very active in this game, went to the locker room early, got IVs, but he is back out here lining up. Now, Ali motioned out of the backfield on that last snap. Is oh, They had to get the spot corrected. They put it at the 29, then move it up to the 30. <laughs> the way Duke's offense has been going, every yard counts. <laughs> Give credit to that Notre Dame defense, too. Pressure coming. Leonard takes a hit and gets rid of it, and it'll be fourth down. Maris Leofow, who just made the previous tackle, applied the heat. Well, they showed pressure in the middle and then drop, and then the pressure ends up actually coming from the left side. A little fake move to the outside. They brought a, a defensive back. It looked like that was Benjamin Morrison. 
But Leofau, boy, he can turn it loose on third down. Good job of disguising that pressure and then getting it. Mentioned in the first half, Notre Dame among the top teams in the country and getting pressure on the quarterback. Been a little bit of a mixed bag with the punting for Duke. Good one and bad one, and that is an ill-advised play by Tyree. And somehow it squirted away from the Blue Devils, and Notre Dame averts disaster. There were two Duke players that were right there. Looked like Curtis Cooper, the snapper, was all over it. Finally, Mike Elko said, we got a chance to catch a break. We didn't catch one break in the first half. I was shocked by this decision. Yeah, this is the odds of being able to take that. Tyree makes a poor decision. Now the ball, it's a free for all. And this ball goes everywhere. You'll see earlier, it looked like 57, but pounced on it, but it came out. Ramon Henderson saving the day for the Fighting Irish by jumping on an estimate. Breaks a couple of tackles, but still just picks up four. Like I said, I mean, look, look at this poor decision, but. Cooper 57 right in the middle of your screen. He's right there with a couple other Duke players. They're already starting to put their arms up like we got the ball, but in fact they didn't. Notre Dame catches another break. Kirk, I understand punt returners wanting to keep the thing from rolling, but that ball was not going to bounce like that. <laughs> and he's a veteran guy, too. Inexplicably bad decision that he gets away with. Sam Hartman. Has to fire it, and boy, he had R.J. Oban in his face, and now Tyree trying to make up for the near mistake with a big play to get into his new territory. Boy, unbelievable job. Watch the pressure off to his right, and he just somehow, it's almost like he avoids the pressure as he's in his throwing motion, and Tyree makes up for that poor decision with a good job of making the catch and then nice yards after the catch. And Sam Hartman is about as calm and cool is any quarterback we've seen this year when there's pressure around him. Hardman now over 150 yards passing. Irish with their first possession of the second half. Back to the ground with Estime. St. Dwayne Carter was the first to hit him. He's been busy for the Blue Devils tonight, too. Just leaning on that Duke defense that has had to make a lot of plays. You know, I think you'll see Duke rotate some more bodies. Going to have to do the best the job that they can of trying to not get worn down by Notre Dame and estimate that offensive line and the power running and Notre Dame's rotating backs. Duke's defense has been out there, had to make a lot of plays to keep him in this game. He coming. Hartman lets it fly deep and he overshoots Rico Flores. It'll be third and six. You know, Estimes came into this game as one of the top backs that we've seen in the, in the country. And yards after contact and, and missed tackles for us. And that first half, Duke played lights out. Tough to get the ball thrown downfield against this Duke secondary. They got good speed, good awareness. Eyes are very disciplined. And that's not a strength of Notre Dame's, especially tonight with the injuries that they have with Thomas out in the freshman great house. Hartman on third down. He's in a lot of trouble. Nias Peebles is after him, and Hartman gets away. Can he get to the sticks? And he cannot as Chandler Rivers he puts the hit on him. He'll be a couple of yards short. It tells you a lot about who Hartman is. I mean, he was right by the boundary. I thought he might just tiptoe out, but instead he lowers his head. I mean, he, he actually took care of the ball. It was, it was out away from his body. Then right before contact, he decides to lower the shoulder. And because of that, he picked up maybe another yard, yard and a half. And now they're going to go for it here on fourth and short. Remember those clutch fourth downs last week that the Irish could not convert. He coming from the Blue Devils. Hartman running for it. Sam Hartman has the first down, and he's out of bounds inside the 30. Really good job by the receivers getting involved and making a nice block. You see Payne, the running back, off to the right there. He's on a, on a route himself. He occupied the linebacker eight. 
Boise, and so just like that, Sam Hartman not having a huge night with his arm, but these last two plays reminding folks he can get it done with his legs when he has to. Big, big conversion there for Notre Dame. Well, Lewis came from the secondary and had a chance to keep Hartman bottled up and let him escape contain now to the ground and estimate and Notre Dame will try to lean on him with that offensive line especially on the left side behind big Joe Walt and Pat Coogan. Estimate. They'll bring up third and about three. You know, these are body blows. You know, not, not just physical body blows, but the emotional part of this game, the, the psychological aspect of this game for this defense. It's another third down and another chance to try to get them off the field. They've done a pretty good job of it all night. Let's see if Mike Elko's bunch on this side can step up one more time. Protection broke down and it'll be fourth down. Aaron Hall coming in, one of the reserve Duke defensive linemen, got to Sam Hartman. And the Irish will send the field goal unit out. Yeah, they brought five, so you create a one on one opportunity. You'd like to think somebody can get home, and it was Aaron Hall who ended up forcing that throw. Nobody open, incidentally, downfield. Outstanding coverage there by Duke secondary on that third down play. So the cannon leg, Spencer Schrader, one for two from short distance tonight. This attempt will be 40 yards. And whistles. Might have had a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Well, the five yards of distance won't be a problem for this guy. <laughs> no, not at all. But he is 0 for 2 from beyond 40. Look at the penalties. Yeah, they're adding up. Now from 45. Schrader puts a foot to it. And that one is good. And Notre Dame pushes its lead to 13 to nothing. Duke defense letting him stand in. Can the Blue Devils? Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear is more driven. Bright and early tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern Time, exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. NFL action from Wembley Stadium, Falcons and the Jaguars. It's only available on ESPN+. Plus. You can get ESPN+, Plus going to ESPNplus.com or download the app. That's where Chris Fowler is. He'll be calling the game tomorrow morning. That's, that's right, and the Jags got off to a slow start. One and two after three weeks. They need a win. That's causing some consternation in the Davis household as we <laughs> check in with Kevin DeGandhi. RD, time now for a Chick-fil-A move on the field. It's Jackson Dart to Trey Harris with under a minute to go. Two-point conversion is good. Ole Miss retakes the lead 55-49. LSU has the chance now inside the 30. Jaden Daniels scrambling, no time on the clock. He has time across the middle, and it's no good. Go figure. Ole Miss's defense finally showing up. At least somebody did, and they get the win, and Boog is hurting, guys, 55-49. Oh, man. Seven. Jeez. Can you imagine? We got three games up here on while we watch <laughs> the game that we're calling. Got to keep up to, to date. By the way, Alabama looks great. Just back on, recalibrated, back on track up early 14. Oklahoma up on Iowa State. Can you imagine that? I mean, LSU I mean, playing with fire with their defense. 
and it catches up to him. Uh, Almost did last week against Arkansas. Tonight it does. Really thought that they were going to be strong defense. Really did this yeah. year with we all, yeah. Mason Smith, Perkins. So far, not so good. Duke trying to get that running game going. It's been good for them all year. As Jordan Waters has the carry. Great patience that time. Let the blocks establish themselves, and then when the few times we've seen a back have a little bit of running room. It's it's been that kind of night for the Duke offense and the offensive line going up against a physical veteran group from Notre Dame. Got to think Riley Leonard is a threat here right to run the football. You think it's not been good on third down just two of eight. Leonard leaves it with his back a good strong run pick up the first down as Waters drives the pile and the sticks move. You're actually seeing the right side of the offensive line get a nice push and, and I think more importantly than that the back running with some purpose on third and short. Leonard O. Oh. The most reliable receiver they have is Jalen Calhoun, and he wanted to take off before he caught it. Yeah, he's just looking around. He is very reliable, works very hard. Watch this. He's got a nice soft space his zone. Ball's put right on him, and he just looked over his left shoulder trying to find out where Xavier Watts was. There's been a little... I don't know if it's anxiety or pressing because of the state. Fair. That's fair. Duke, Duke has seemed a little out of sorts yeah. on offense. Of course, that'll help you get back in rhythm. Has they got the ball to Jacquez more and more with the best run of the night for Duke. Nice job here with a kick out block right on the outside. And then you'll see a seal from the right guard, Jacob Monk. Backers unable to scrape. 63 is able to get up to that second level. And there's some nice speed by Moore. The most talented, maybe, of all the backs. Shows the vision and then the burst. Running behind Jake Hornibrook, too, the younger brother of Alex Hornibrook, the former Wisconsin and Florida State quarterback. Now first and ten inside the 30. Leonard on the wheel. And he overshoots his tight end. Nicky Dalmolin was the intended receiver. Good coverage there. Tight coverage by Xavier Watts. You know, you start getting that running game going. That's what, what we're used to seeing with Riley Leonard and Duke's offense is they run the ball and it sets up their play action. Look at that stride for stride right in his hip there by Watts. But when they run, those safeties, their eyes start to creep and start to have to respect those backs and, and even Leonard in the run game. And then it can create those opportunities off play action. We've not seen that at all tonight. Get Jordan Waters. Waters keeps the legs churning. He'll pick up about four. Another good block by Jay Cornybrook. He's pulling that linebacker blitzed. He was able to get him just before Waters as he got the football in his hands. I thought that play might get blown up. Watch the backer. Watch 73. Got him right there. And it gave a nice inside crease for Duke's offense. Kirk Riley Leonard has missed his last five throws, just two of his last nine. And this would be a very good time to come up with a completion for Mike Elko. They'll keep it on the ground and move it about a yard or two short. I'm impressed with these backs. There. This, again, the first time we've, we've seen him get out in the open, show some speed. We've seen some short yardage running and, and getting some tough yards. This time it's Waters. This is obviously a play call to set up the fourth down and short. And he got more yards than maybe they expected. Now it's fourth and one. As we get inside six minutes to go in the third quarter, you feel like the Duke really needs to convert this down just 13, but to stay in the game. See what they've done on fourth down this year. Leonard flips it out, and the RPO is complete to Hagens, and they get the first down. How about all that pre-snap movement moving over here? They're trying to get a feel for where they might be. 
What are they going? How are they going to respond? He gets the lead back, man to man. Good inside move there on the slot by Hagens. Gets the separation. I mean, he had to. He could have pitched it. He could have thrown it, depending on what the defense did. They took away that little shuffle pass. Athletic ability keeps it alive, almost like an option play. They're just stretching it out, stretching that defense out, and waited for Hagens to clear. He might have been fortunate not to get a man downfield call in the offensive line, too. They'll go back and burst into the secondary and more with another strong run, and the Blue Devils are on the doorstep. How about this offensive line? Hornybrook, the right tackle. Jacob Monk, the right guard, pulling around. We've seen Waters. We've seen more. That time it's more accelerating right into the teeth of that veteran Notre Dame defense. It has been just dominant most of this game. One yard away from their first touchdown of the night, and that would put a little game pressure on Notre Dame. 11th play of this drive. Now go back to the ground, and Moore won't get there. It'll take at least 12 plays this time. With we'll see what the official has. Offside, defense, number five. The penalty is half the distance to the goal line. First down. Yeah, he, he just, Cam Hart just lined up over the inside receiver offsides. It's not that necessarily that it's a lot of yardage. It's just that you get to get another down. And the way this game is going, you don't know if you're facing a goal line stand. Duke will happily take a, a couple inches, but more importantly, get first down back. Yet another pre-snap penalty for Notre Dame. And he'll go to the ground, driving, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown for Jordan Waters. What a drive by Duke. A great response in a night where the offensive line has had their hands full against a great defense, a great plan, a defense that's played with purpose. And this was not a, a lot of explosive plays. This was Duke's offense earning every single yard of that drive to put the touchdown on the board. 11 plays, 75 yards. Eight up just under six minutes. And with 3.36 to go in the third, we got a ball game in Wallace Wade Stadium. As opposed to the Rose Bowl. I, I, I honestly, I forgot about COVID being at AT&T Stadium down in Arlington. In addition to, obviously, your favorite place in yeah. college football. Yeah. Actual Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena. And they're playing every time we touch, which is sort of the unofficial Duke anthem, and they've got the crowd alive here. Jeremiah Love has had some big plays tonight. Moves the ball to fake punt, gets him out to the 25. Back to Durham right after this. 11 plays, 75 yards. Jack Westmore ripped off a 34-yard run to get it going. Yeah, they, they kept the ball on the ground. They, you know, the great play here to keep the drive alive on a, on a fourth down. That's just Riley Leonard being an athlete. But the thing that surprised I think anybody who's watched this game is the offensive line and the rotation of backs. Nine of 11 of those plays on the ground, 68 yards total, and getting a good push. Here's what's at stake for the Blue Devils, trying to extend that winning streak, which dates back to last year. They haven't started 5-0 since 1994, which was also the last time they won a game matching ranked opponents. Now, they've beaten ranked teams, but not when they were ranked, something they could do tonight. But still down six, Sam Hartman throws it right into the arms, and he's lucky that his receiver collided with Jeremiah Lewis, or that would have been an easy interception. Good job here. Watch the safety. And I think at one point, Hartman thinks that he's running with this receiver right there. And by thinking that he's occupied, he thinks he's got a chance to squeeze this in. Instead, he comes off with the receiver downfield because he's got his eyes on the ball, on the quarterback sitting in zone. Lewis almost fools Hartman into a turnover that would have given the Duke Blue Devils plus field position. And Chris Tyree, perhaps inadvertently saved that interception 
running the crossing route. How much there is third and long now? Now this is the first time really we're talking since pregame. The crowd back into the game after that touchdown and a big third down. See if they can try to make a difference here. Duke starts up front. Hartman tries to get away and he does not. Trey Freeman wrapped him up. Coverage sack. They did have the stunt, a little twist up front, but really it was, you see a little bit of movement here, but really look at downfield. You're Sam Hartman. Who are you going to throw this ball to? Good job of mixing and combination of coverage, some man, some zone. Nowhere to go with the ball, and he just has to eat it. Second sack, or first sack of the night for Duke. Samir Hagans, who caught that fourth down pass earlier, will return the punt. And it's not a particularly good one, and the Blue Devils are going to have terrific field position. Coming off that touchdown drive, they force a three and out and get it right back. Riley Leonard getting a little elevation. Time now for our halfway trivia question in their respective common draft eras. The NBA is 1966, NFL 1967. Which program has more first round draft pick? Duke's men's basketball or Notre Dame football? I'm going Notre Dame football. I'm going Notre Dame football too because you go all the way back to the 60s and Duke has been later. That's my guess. I have no idea. All right, remember. Last drive, 11 plays, nine times on the ground. Excited to see the adjustment from Al Golden, Marcus Freeman, how they're going to try to slow down this run game. Mentioned good starting field position, Kirk. It's the best of the night for the Blue Devils from their own 40. Jacquez is going to pick up three. Go right back to this running game. A little bit of hesitation, looking over to just get confirmation, waiting to see what Notre Dame settled into before they ended up making the call. But they pick up where they left off. Nice push. Positive yards there on first and ten. Remember, the, the play action is usually, when you start running the ball like this, it's a first and ten type of thing when these linebackers are just flying downhill. The safety's eyes are in that backfield. Now Mullen coming in motion now, and Riley Leonard pulls it, and he'll be knocked down after a pickup of one, now third and six. It's a really good job of giving him the read. The indicator is right here. When he collapses down, that's going to tell him to, to keep it. But watch how they intentionally do that and then get to the outside with, with Mills. So they gave him the read to make him hold on to it. And then the inside defender anticipated that and fought to the outside, knowing he'd keep that ball. Great job there. Leonard down the middle fires into traffic. He was looking for Higgins. It's incomplete. Without anything really forcing the safeties deep, they're able to settle at about 15 yards and think about the intermediate throw. That time Watts didn't get downfield much at all. He's almost waiting for that crosser, and he was able to get involved in knocking it away. Riley's had a tough night throwing the ball just 9 of 23 for 100 yards and Hagans who's made some plays It's as if he's holding that shoulder as he heads to the sidelines Chris Tyree calls for the fair catch and he hauls it in at about the 18 or 19 yard line Time to answer the half -life trivia question in the common draft eras in the NBA and the NFL. Which program has more first-round picks, Duke's men's basketball or Notre Dame football? And the answer, the Blue how about, Devils. How about that? If Coach K is out of the Broadway show that he and his wife were going to tonight, he's upset that we missed that answer. He said he wanted <laughs> to get back in time for the end of the Duke game. 
So Notre Dame has it back now. First and 10, 42 seconds remaining here in the third period. It was perfect timing by Shane Battier. He's frustrated with us. He just got out right when we cut to him. <laughs> He's disappointed. By the way, thanks. Oh, we got a flag, late flag down. If they're going to get that on Duke, frustration with Terry Moore, who just threw a Notre Dame player after the after the whistle. So you get a maybe a loss of one or two. A great play by after Freeman, the play was over, and then a dead ball foul. foul. Unnecessary roughness against the defense number 23. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. The, the drive couldn't have started any better for, Notre, for, for the, uh, the Duke defense with that play by 12. But after the whistle, right in the middle of your screen, just a poor decision. First penalty, I think. It is. Duke. First penalty of the night against the Blue Devils. Notre Dame has had a bucket full of them. Most of them are all of them five yarders. But the big one going against the Blue Devils now for the first time and gets Notre Dame a little better field position. And that's a really good idea to throw the ball to Mitchell Evans and he's already had a career night and now he's over a hundred yards as we get to the end of the quarter and he gets it to midfield let's see what happens on the rest of this drive but that that could be a pivotal play. hard to bring down that's 10 extra yards after the catch that was the AT&T 5G clicker as we open the fourth quarter Notre Dame picks up a couple with Estime as we check in with Holly well, guys, you see how big Mitchell Evans has been for them tonight for Notre Dame. He just got injured, though. He came to the sideline. They put tape over that right ankle. He spatted it up, and then he has pushed off, worked on it. He is moving pretty well. I saw him fist pump a couple of guys that he is good to go, but he is not out there right now. Keep your eyes on that right ankle. We will. Uh, all five of his catches have given the Irish a first down tonight. Estime lost his balance about as soon as he got the football. Powers ahead, it'll be third down. Yeah, he's going to come back into the game. He's fighting through this. He, he, he's had a, just a great night, not just the five catches, over 100 yards. I mean, it's one of his best games of his career. And you and I were talking at the break. Think over the years, all the Notre Dame tight ends that are just prototypical of what you look for. This guy's 6'6", 250 pounds, showing tonight what kind of receiver and what kind of threat he is in a pass game. Hardman chased. Fires it deep. Merriweather's down there, but the flag is going to come out. Bill, I'd love to ask Bill. I mean, Bill's with us. It, it, there was contact, Bill, but it, it, this, there's no way he had a chance to make this catch. They're going to just judge whether the ball was catchable or not. And the officials are getting together having a conference on it now. Bill, what do you think? I, I, I'm just telling you, I... I I, I see contact. I just don't know how there's that's no a yeah. Pass yeah, there you go. And he just throws this. And there's no chance the receiver could get to that yeah. football. Yeah, they deemed it uncatchable, so the contact uh, is not a foul. Contact is late. Now, if he's working back, if he was yeah. working back, the receiver back to the ball, and then the corner was was in his way, then that's a different story. That ball was just thrown downfield. Exactly, Kurt. That's that would be pass interference if he was working back to it. And a great job of officiating. I like when they come together and talk it up, about it and wave the flag. Mike Elko was glad too. <laughs> Chandler Rivers might have gotten away with one. Merriweather couldn't work it back, and the Irish will have to give up the football. Beautiful kick. Put it right in the corner at the one yard line. You cannot do it better than Bryce McPherson just did it. Wow. Can you imagine Pat McAfee in Indianapolis watching that kick right there? That is perfection. We got all excited about the punt, but they looked at it again, said it went over the pylon. It's a touchback. What a break for Duke and a bad break for Notre Dame as Jordan Waters gets the carry. Let's go back to it. Bring Bill in. Bill, what do you see here? Well, the rule says that if the ball goes over or inside the pylon at the goal line, it's a touchback. 
this ball goes right over the top of the pylon. Uh, we have that good pylon shot that showed it go right over the top. Oh, you like the Tough. progressive pylon cam right there, right over that went right yeah. over the top. Right over the top, touchback. Good job by replay. Well, Tough angle from where the official was, but that's the right call. Built by guy Mike Black. Noted kicking experts. Not sure he agrees. Not because of the rule, obviously. He thinks it was inside it when it went out of bounds. At any rate, it only matters what the official decided. And rather than being backed up on their own one-yard line, Duke is out of the 25, but now a third down. Good tight coverage there by Jaden Mickey, who is in right now for Cam Hart. Tough night throwing the ball for Riley Leonard. The Duke go to the air here. Pressure coming. They pick it up well, and Leonard completes it. He's got Jordan Moore. Moore across the 50 and just into Notre Dame territory. Well, first it starts with the protection. Blitzing right through here. Watch the back do a nice job of picking this up by Waters. Without those backers there, he's able to wait, find that throwing lane. Even with that drop there from the defensive end, he gets that ball out. And Moore had to hobble off after that play, and they did mark him down right at the 50-yard line, but a big pickup. 27 yards on that one. Now Leonard. Down the sideline. Leonard's got great wheels. Riley Leonard inside the 20. Well, this is a design run again. Watch the lineman pulling around and leading him. Flash it to the jet sweep and then get to the edge. Very close to a hold by 63 Monk, but they got away with it. And when he turns the corner with those long legs, he is covering a lot of ground. Good move right there to get around the undersized Morris in the corner who's up in run support. And there's what you expect to see from Riley Leonard. 34 yard, check it, 33 yard run. Second run in the second half of longer than 30. Leonard going to try it again, and Notre Dame is there to snuff him out just across the line of scrimmage, Riley Mills. Yeah, Al Golden is, again, coming up with us. We saw this earlier. He's reading this key. If it collapses down, that means he's going to keep the football, but they're doing that intentionally where you can get the inside push to the outside with Mills. You set the edge, even though you get Marie key, where he's going to keep the football. Nice job, a little fooling Riley Leonard in this Duke offense a couple times on that zone read. And second down and nine. His eyes lit up. He saw that yeah, the end man <laughs> collapse. He thought, oh, I'm going to get to the edge again. But well, they're going to watch that last play and see if there was targeting. And there is Jordan Botello, who hit Leonard in the hip with the crown of his helmet. It was Botello that I saw on the sideline that shaken up, which is the reason for the rule. Let's bring Bill in. Again. Bill, what do you yeah, think? Bill, what, what do you what do you see here? Obviously, he lowers the his helmet. And the crown of the helmet rule that applies from your head to your toes. Uh, the, the person being hit uh, gets that protection all the way through. So he does lower the helm, crown of the helmet, comes in with forcible contact right into the hip. This is going to be a targeting call. And, and of course, that rule is there to protect the, the defender as much as anything. Yeah, the crown of the helmet hits have more problems with, with damage to the uh, tackler's neck than anything. Yeah. Well, you don't want to speculate about an injury, but he looked, he was staggered, was Botello after delivering that hit. And Holly is saying, though, that, that it's his arm that's bothering him there, but it looks as if Botello's evening might be done, according to our after friend Bill Amagni. There was a personal foul targeting with the crown of the helmet by number 12. 
Ramsey is half the distance to the goal line. Number 12 is disqualified. Automatic first down. We have to show the depth. Here we are in the fourth quarter, 11 minutes to go. And it has been a low scoring physical game, draining physically and, and emotionally. And now you have one of your, your better players that'll have to go out. You know, Riley Leonard, we, we all night we've been waiting to see him perform and wait. He has so much hype this week, today on game day, and he deserves it. But here we are in the biggest moment in the game. He's had 61 yards on this drive, 27 through the air, 34 on the run. It's your best player showing up at the right time. And that targeting call puts the ball on the eight. First and goal for Duke. He stays on his feet. The strong run from Waters. Waters still driving toward the goal line. What a run. What an effort by Jordan Waters. Six feet, 220 pounds. This is an individual effort to the nth degree. That is a guy that wants to win a football game. A graduate who's played a lot of football. Playing with a lot of determination on that carry right there. It's been a tough night, but these last two drives, they've gotten it going. That's what Mike Elko is all about. Attitude, culture, belief. Beautiful. Now I'd give it right back to him. They do. And this time, Notre Dame is up to the challenge. They knock him down behind the line. Howard Cross was there. Those high packers are flying down to get involved. Bertrand, the middle linebacker, you talk about a big collision right in the middle. Just blowing up Hazley, who's leading the way. It's got to be four down territory. Oh, yeah. Still a lot of time. And this is quite the opportunity for the Blue Devils after the targeting call. After the putt call went their way on the touchback. Try to pay it off. Leonard has a man wide open. It's a touchdown to Jordan Moore. Give Kevin Johns a lot of credit, the play caller, not just the play, but all of that pre-snap movement. He had four receivers on the right, and he moves them back, and then he motions at the last second. Jordan Moore from the left to the right. Notre Dame, nobody picked him up. And Duke has the lead. They were down 13-0. And here it is, Reese. Look at this movement. Look at Notre Dame adjusting. Now watch this right here. Here he is. Does anybody run with him? Little miscommunication, a little hesitation. Notre Dame's not real sure. Great job. Well designed by Kevin Johns to save that one for a pivotal point here in the fourth quarter. Duke has the lead and Wiley Leonard's mother. ABC Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Wallace Wade Stadium is alive. Hurting that guy's ears in the middle of the student section. Duke just took the lead, 14-13. Charlie Ham kicks it off. Now see if Notre Dame can answer. Jeremiah Love looking for room. Love's still on his feet as he gets up to about the 30-yard line. All-State bus here in Durham helping us keep up with all the action in college football. Kirk, what's the All-State good hands play today? Man, a lot of fun sitting around and having game day and a game in one location. Watched a lot of football. The thing that stood out to me was the way Kentucky played against Florida. In the early going, Mark Stoops' team looking physical, looking athletic. Ray Davis, what a day. Yeah, what, a day. He day. Had. what, he had 280 on the ground? I mean, Kentucky, not just today against Florida, but all of a sudden you start to look at the SEC. You start to look at who looks real, who has some 
a chance to maybe make some noise. Those cats look for real. Now Sam Hartman, he's proven over his six-year college career that he's real. Gets the ball back down by one love. Gets up to the 29. Well, after the week they had, losing in the fashion which they did against Ohio State, where they felt they outplayed the Buckeyes, only to have the game taken away from them, give credit to Ohio State, but it was a, a tough week. And now here they find themselves in a game that really they have dominated, and yet they're down by one. Under nine minutes to go. Critical moment for Hartman and the Irish offense. Back to the ground, Love hit by Aeneas Peoples. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. You know, Mike Elko's got to be so proud of the way this Duke front has held up. They're undersized in comparison. If you just look at them on paper compared to Notre Dame, and yet the movement, the athletic ability, the quickness, the linebackers downhill has given these polling linemen and the double teams a lot of trouble. Hartman on third down, pocket was collapsing, it's incomplete. Well, Cam Dillon ends up coming right here, but they're showing a lot of different pressures affecting the communication. He wins on the outside there just with straight speed with R.J. Oban. And another good job on third down by Duke's defense getting after. Notre Dame is now 2 of 13 on the night on third downs. And how about Oban beating Joe Alt? Now if they get the pressure, right. one of the top left tackles in the game. And now McPherson's going to have to punt it away again. Calhoun gets up to make the catch, and the Blue Devils will have it back inside. Eight to go with a one-point lead. Field, some miscommunication. Notre Dame talked about that. They addressed it, but here we are again a week later. Goal line, you can see the miscommunication, the pre-snap movement. Everybody trying to get on the same page. A late move or motion by Jordan Moore. Nobody runs with him. Some hesitation, some confusion. So back-to-back -back weeks, the goal line defense giving Notre Dame some problems. Now the Irish will try to get off the field and stop this Duke running attack, which suddenly surged to life in the second half. Jordan Waters on the carry. Let's see if Kevin Johns is a play caller. What he elects to do now in a one-point game. He's, he's really put together a great plan here in the second half. They're, you want to be careful of becoming too conservative and taking your foot off the gas. You know, they, they've been aggressive. They've, they've been attacking, even with the urgency. He told us they would mix tempo up. So he learned that from Kevin Wilson years ago about not just going fast, but mixing it up and how that affects the rhythm of a defense. And you're right back to Waters. Waters slipping tackles and getting the first down and getting up close to midfield. Yeah, he was able to get through, get through Leofau, who ain't, who puts himself in a position, checks the quarterback, and he's right there. He just misses the tackle. That's third and four if he makes the tackle right there. A different Duke team in his second half. The offensive line and these backs, Reese, are running with purpose. And that has been an occasional problem for the Notre Dame defense, missing tackles. And they've missed some here in the fourth quarter. And they need to, need to make them the most. Now Riley Leonard pulls it and keeps it. And this time he does not fool the Irish defense. Riley Mills was there. I'm talking a lot about Duke trying to get back into this game. And if you're a Notre Dame fan, you know, you, you've got a lot of veterans out on that defense. You, know, you, you, you want to see somebody step up, whether it is a Howard Cross or it's J.T. Bertrand or Jack Kaiser, D.J. Brown, Xavier Watts. Got a lot of guys that have played a lot of football. Their backs are against the wall. Somebody's going to have to step up and deliver. Last run has picked up a yard. Jaquez Moore now in the backfield for the Blue Devils. Pressure coming from Leofau. Might almost a face mask as Leonard squirted through there and got fairly close to the first down. But they're going to say, I believe he was marked down at about the 47. Again, Leofau had the penetration. Boy, he timed that up perfectly, that blitz. 
He shot through the gap, and it, it looked like he had a chance to bring Riley Leonard down way back in the backfield. There's that blitz. Shoots the gap. Bang, bring him down right there. So picks up about another five yards from where that initial contact was. Now a big third and five. I think the Duke fans are frustrated. They didn't think he was down. Here we go. Moore is the running back. Heat coming. Leonard escapes. He's got some room. Leonard has the first down inside the 40. They bring pressure. You see two, DJ Brown, they brought the middle linebacker, also Bertrand, but nobody able to account for the quarterback. We saw that earlier in this game. When you have an athletic quarterback, you know you have to squeeze him, but when you bring the house and you don't get to him, that's a problem because the secondary is in man coverage and no one's able to bring him down short of the first. He's up to 85 yards on the ground. The junior quarterback from Fairhope, Alabama. Moore is greeted immediately. It'll be second and long. Marcus Freeman holding on to those three timeouts. We're at the four-minute mark at this point. Each first down that Duke gets, it's not just about the first down. It's obviously a new set of downs, and they just keep grinding on that clock. You know that the internal pressure is ratcheting up on the Irish after the week they've had, after having a 13-0 lead in this game. Now desperately needing to get off the field and get their offense another chance. Leonard, that was a run all the way, and Riley gets it down to the 31-yard line. He'll need about four more for the first down. Yeah, and, and, and again, when they when they are motioning, you put the quarterback in empty. You got a big tight end in there. You've got six central offensive linemen. You're just looking at the numbers. All Notre Dame had in that box area were five defenders. You got six blockers. That's what the threat of the quarterback run does to a defense. Gives you that extra hat. Much better on third down in the second half. That has been a major problem, as you pointed out, for the Irish when they've had the ball. Waters motions to the backfield. Leonard leaves it with him, and he's hit and knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Xavier Watts looped into the backfield and helped make the stop. And now Marcus Freeman will use one of those timeouts. He saved them for the right time, kind of rolling the dice. You see the pressure at the bottom with zero Watts. At the top, you saw D.J. Brown, so you got to roll the dice on third down and short. They brought both the safeties off the edge, and it worked out. Four. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear is more driven. Fourth down and six, and Duke is leaving the offense on the field, Kirk. Now let's see, are they going to try to draw him off and get closer? Sure looks like it. They're just going to, oh, he's going to, he's going to pooch. Yep. Now Riley Leonard with the pooch punt can do get down and cover it, and they do. The kid does it all. 360 dunks, can run, he can lead, he can throw. Now he gets a pooch punt, puts it inside the five. And his mom's wristband comes into play there. <laughs> Yeah, let, let, let's go back and talk about, Bill, if we could bring you in. That was a big re review that uh, I guess should not have actually been allowed to be reviewed, right? Going back to look at this, they're pinned them inside the one-yard line. Yeah, the, the official ruled it out at the one. Because the ball, I mean, we could see the ball went over the top of the pylon. But by rule, for replay to get involved in that, it had to either touch the sideline or hit the pylon, which it didn't do. So, so Bill, they were they made an error in replay in that situation. 
They made an error. I made an error, too, in my initial comment, but not reviewable by the current replay rule. So with that in mind, that ball would have been inside the one. Instead, they moved it out to the 20, and they went eight plays and 80 yards and a touchdown. So yeah. significant, significant sequence. Difference of 19 yards. Now, while we were sorting that out, Notre Dame got called for another false start there. Right down there in the midst of the way wackos, but this is why you got Sam Hartman. Hartman's in trouble and gets away in the end zone. Now lost it down. Incomplete, but a flag flies in. Boy, how about him just keeping that play alive? A late blitz that surprised the offensive line, and I think surprised Sam Hartman with Trey Freeman from his right. Pass interference. Defense, number 26. 15-yard penalty. Joshua Pickett gets called. See the interference down at the bottom. The freshman is kind of a crossing route, then tries to get downfield. He gets locked up, grabbed the jersey by Pickett. So they avoid the sack, and then they get an interference call, gets him out to the 16 yard line. You got to feel like Hartman saw that too and took advantage. So now, out of the shadow of his own goal post, 2.29 to go. Irish trying to save themselves on the road. Hartman in trouble again, and he threw it and has to make caught it. The problem there is the clock will keep moving. He would have been better off letting that ball go. Good defensive pressure by Duke again, getting in there and beating this offensive line. Sam Hartman, you can see, four wins as a starter. His first career win was a big comeback against Tulane. Those coming at Wake Forest just missed one last time. Hartman back shoulder looking for Flores. And Pickett was on the coverage, and this time he forced a third and 12. You're trying to make a comeback here, and the best receivers on the night have been the tight ends. You know, you, you have Jaden Thomas not playing tonight, Jaden Greathouse not playing tonight. It's up to Tyree, it's up to these tight ends. Maybe Mer Merriweather, five, could make a play but an inexperienced group of receivers. They are 0 for their last 10 on third down. Hartman, and who else? He finds Mitchell Evans is tight end, and they break that drought on third down and keep the game alive. How about the freshman? Watch his route right here. He actually takes the defender with him, the middle linebacker, Cam Dillon, and it opens it up right there. Nice job of being patient, waited as long as he could with that pass rush, but a heck of a read and throw. Six catches, a buck 34 for Evans tonight. Hartman down the middle again. He's got Rico Flores. Flores still on his feet, and he's down to the Duke 41. A Duke defender loses his footing. It was Joshua Pickett. Look to your far right. You'll see it in the background. He loses. Man coverage goes down. Sam Hartman was going to make that throw anyway. How about the true freshman stepping up tonight, Flores? Hartman back to work. Taking a shot. Throws it to the outside, and Merriweather had it in his hand, but a flag comes out. They may get that on Tobias. Yeah, I think he he pushed off on Al Blades Pass Jr. Offense. Yeah. Number five. Fifty yard penalty. First down. Murrayweather had a step, and he re, the, based on the way he reacts, you can see that right arm extend on Al Blades. Al Blades Jr. right away saying, "Hey, <laughs> help me out here, man. I'm on an island as it is, and he's pushing on me." Transfer from Miami, and the great Blades family of defensive backs. Draws the offensive pass interference, and now it's first and 25. They're at the 41. Now they're back at their own 44. Estime has it. Audrey looking for some room, and not a lot there. And now the clock's in just over a minute. Yeah, Marcus Freeman will use his second timeout. 
This is the risk that Duke took by the pooch punt. You know, you, you, you potentially get aggressive, you try to go for it, try to get uh, more points. Instead, you get the ball back to Notre Dame, and you give them a chance to win it now with a field goal from one of the, probably one of the strongest legs in college football, wouldn't you say? Yeah, distance will not be a problem for Spencer Schrader now. The accuracy. Yeah. But he certainly has the legs, so you won't need, they're not far away from getting into position where he at least has a shot at it. I was on the field pregame. You know, you get down there all the time. The kickers come out about an hour early, and I, I, I knew about his big leg, and I'm standing there watching him, and, and he keeps backing up, keeps backing up, and he gets to about, you know, he's kicking from hit the 45, then he gets to the 50, then he goes back to the other 45, and I'm thinking, what's this guy doing from 65? He, and he had the leg. His career long came just down the road against North Carolina State. 54 yarder. The Irish still have a minute on the clock. Second down at 16. Line of scrimmage is the Duke 47. Yeah, they're, 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 you know, you're hurrying. There's some urgency. You still have that one timeout. It's more about the execution. And how about young Rico Flores stepping up on this drive? Made some plays. Drew the penalty. Had a nice uh, route. Had the late touchdown last week. Yep. Clutch play tonight. Mitchell Evans has been the go-to guy for Sam Hartman. Evans in the slot to the right. Sam throws it up for grabs and he's looking for Evans and he almost hauled it in. Hartman has been under heat from this Duke defense. And, and the, the reason it is Mike Elko is continuing to bring pressure. He's not going to say, you know what, let's rush three, drop eight, play coverage, keep the ball in front, live by the sword, die by the sword. Mike Elko is an aggressive guy, one of the most aggressive. He's not pulling back. It's worked for him all night. He keeps dialing up different looks and being exotic up front. See that green line, they need to at least get it there. There it comes again. Hartman gets away, and he has to throw it, and it's almost intercepted, and it's fourth down. That time he brought Brandon Johnson. We just talked about how they're doing a good job of mixing up looks. You get pressure out here. He's disguising. He comes late, and he actually gets in to affect it. Nobody accounts for him. I'd love to see a defensive coach the game on the line instead of just being careful. That's our culture, right? We are an aggressive defense. And even though we could maybe give up a big play, that's who we're going to be. And we're going to win this game or lose this game with that mindset. Game hanging in the balance. Fourth and 16. has a chance to run for it. Can Sam get there? He came up short against Ohio State, but tonight he moves the chains on fourth down. Now he wants to fire it. He's trying to hold on to that timeout. Smart play. Are you kidding me with Sam Hartman? We've, we've bragged about his, his arm and his accuracy, and this kid is a fighter using his legs all night because of the pressure, because of the confusion. Offensive line has had not had a great night taking care of him. It's either him sitting in the pocket, everything going on around him, or, in this case, knowing exactly where he needed to go to use those legs to pick up the first down. And also, not only keeping the game alive, now they're in field goal range. He still has that timeout. A 17-yard run on 4th and 16. Estime, it's loose! Andre Estime, touchdown Notre Dame! What a drive! What an answer! What a pair of runs! Look at this. 10 plays, 95 yards in 2 minutes and 4 seconds. Hartman, game-winning drive. He's 4 of 8, 17 yards scramble on that fourth down play. Heartbreak among the Duke fans, but...
Still a half minute to go. Five point game. Fighting Irish will go for two. The Irish want to make sure that they get this. How about this fourth down yeah. run from let's, Sam Hartman let's to keep go back. the game alive? Let's go back and appreciate this. He actually wanted to throw it to Evans right when he looked to his left. Right there, he was taken away. He said, to heck with it. I'm going to go get this thing. Shows you that acceleration. Knew exactly where he wanted to go. And then Estime following that offensive line. Really, it's just a heck of an effort. There was real, nowhere to go off to the left, but he just kept trying to find grass. Cut back. Got behind the big tight end, and the safeties were out of position. I think he was as surprised as anybody. Takes it all the way to the end zone. Boy, his guys have fought hard here Boy, in the they... second half. I just got to say how I think all of us who are just objective college football fans. After what Notre Dame went through last week, we all wondered how would they show up, how would they be. They got tested tonight. The way Duke took the lead, they're on the road. Everyone's against them. They got to go basically the length of the field to be able to get to at least get into field goal range, right? Instead, they score the touchdown with their backs against the wall. Maybe their season on the line. And now that defense will need to make one more stop. They'll have a chance for atonement. Duke has all three of its timeouts, but first the two-point conversion. Hartman, throwback. It's good. It's a seven-point game. I, I think we're seeing a new Sam Hartman. That defense feared him running. They worried about him taking off. That's what they adjusted to. They took their eyes off of coverage. Watch him come out of there. He's not just jogging. He's sprinting. Duke's worried he's going to go to the corner. They lose their, their man in coverage. And he said, thank you very much. Remember, guys, I can still throw it, too. Now Hartman, who was here last year with Wake Forest, and lost a shootout game to Riley Leonard, 34-31. Now he's put his team up with a terrific drive. Notre Dame up by seven, but not done yet. Blue Devils will have 31 seconds. See if they can force this game into overtime. I almost don't want to jinx him showing him like that because they showed him like that last week when Ohio State was starting to move the ball down the field and they kept showing him and then it was another play and they'd show him like this and then eventually they stopped showing him because Ohio State scored. So we're happy for him. He looks good. He's got the, he's got the look going, but right now it's about Notre Dame's defense stepping up here and trying to secure a victory. See if Riley Leonard has one more trick up his sleeve. Blue Devils have had trouble in the passing game. Winner just 11 of 26 tonight. Fair catch from Terry Moore. So 75 yards between the Blue Devils and potentially a tie or a win if they can get it into the end zone. Uh, you got 31 seconds. You got all three timeouts. You got some receivers that have made some plays for you here in the second half. Most notably, five Calhoun, eight more. The backs can be a factor. The big question to me is can this offensive line in an obvious passing situation, can they protect? Can they give Riley Leonard enough time to try to make a read and get a good throw out? First play of the drive. Completion and Hagens scoots out of bounds after picking up five, 27 ticks left. And Notre Dame. He'll take that, even though he gets out of bounds. Just a five-yard gain. It's all about the clock for Notre Dame. That one win as the start of the game I referenced against Sam Hartman and Wake Forest last year before Hartman transferred to Notre Dame. And Leonard hit, balls loose. And Leonard is clutching his ankle, and the football's still loose. But, and it's Notre Dame football. How about Howard Croft? Remember I talked about, oh, I hate to see that. Boy, oh boy, I hope he's okay. Oh, boy. Just a devastating way for this to end for Duke. And he's being attended to on the field. 
We talked about a Notre Dame veteran defender is going to have to make a play, and it ends up being Howard Cross. Beats his man, gets to the football before Riley Leonard can come forward with his hand. That's definitely a fumble. And his ankle twisted in terrible looking fashion as Cross was making that play. And Riley's still down. Boy, you hate to see this. He is, he is played hard tonight, played his heart out. Yep. As the guys on both teams have, this has been a hard-fought game, and they're helping Riley Leonard off the field now. But how fitting for you, know, you see players are going to carry him off there. And while this certainly puts a damper on the end, it certainly does nothing to diminish a gutsy, yeah. tough-nosed, Mentally tough victory for Notre Dame. And if you're a Notre Dame fan, you know about Riley Mills, 99, Howard Cross. Th those guys battled in the middle all night long. That's what they're known for is their effort, their consistency. And Cross has a monster night. 13 tackles, three and a half for a loss. To force two fumbles. You see the big sack there. His dad, High C Cross, longtime Giants tight end. Former Alabama star, proud of his son's effort tonight, without a doubt, as Estime slams it up into the line. And Duke is going to let time expire. Sam Hartman exchanging words, pleasant ones, congratulatory words with Brandon Johnson.